ちは。はじめまして。ようこそ。Everything in Potteration, the podcast where we talk about when the internet can be too much. あたしは、デイリーさん。So many people already hit like click. <laughs> They're just like, oh god, Japanese click, done. <laughs> That's、weird. racist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm Colin. Hi, guys. How's it going?、Uh, and I'm Robert, and I'm a Baka fucking Gaijin. <laughs> wow.、It、smells like Baka in here.、Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are all Baka Gaijin, but、uh, like you, dear listener, we're fans of Japan.、Um, I think we've, we've talked about、uh, various Japanese art forms, high art forms. Like Cat Girl.、Um, Like cat girls、uh, on this podcast before.、Uh, and we usually have、uh, very high praise for cat girls and other、uh, high Japanese art forms.、Um, but this one,、uh, we're, we're going to、uh, get, get into the trenches here a bit on the reasons why Japan isn't actually a utopia filled with cat girls and waifus and everything wonderful.、Uh, Because、uh, unfortunately, it's not. Every country has its flaws. There's a lot of things that we love about Japan, and we're usually w o n t to praise it. But we also have to recognize that、uh, like running away and moving to Japan isn't going to solve all our problems. That's something I've had to personally reconcile with over the years.、Mm -hmm. You mean、and、people in Japan don't live on a sti、uh, stiff job? Oh my God, I can't talk. Stiff diet. Stiff dick. Of, Sorry.、Uh, yeah, stiff. Oh my God. Got、Stiff、him. diet of sushi and pocky. No, no. I'm pretty, pretty sure there are people who want to want to eat the rich or the diet, if you will.、Um, oh, I, I see what you did there. It, Capital、uh, D the, diet. The, the diet is the the governing one of the governing bodies of the Japanese government.、Uh, oh. But no, I do want to say here off the top, as as the only half Asian、uh, on our podcast, as half Filipino, right? And I've lived, you know, seventeen and a half years of my life in Korea,、I've、been to Japan before. I don't want this show to, to come off like,、um, we fucking hate Japan's the word, like anti Japan. <laughs> yeah.、It's, let's be right. Like, no, it's, it's not that. I think it's more、um, like America itself also has flaws, right? In the same way、mm. that Japan does too. And I think in the 50s, 60s, or you know, even like 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, America from the outside looked like a utopia in a way, right? Because all you were watching were the Hollywood movies and, you know, it just looked cool to be American. I mean, that's kind of the, you know, the, the original conceit, right? Like, bring,、mm. bring your sick, bring your, your hungry, and we will bring them the American dream. And, you know, white picket fences all around, y'all. Yeah, and that seems nice from the outside. But then when you dig in and you learn more about America, especially if you've lived in America, you can tell, okay, it's not all, you know, happy and, and great because there are people like Ted Cruz in the world.、Um, I think with Japan, <laughs> there, there is a similar vibe where we're going through right now. We're in the past 20, 30 years, you know, anime and like other aspects of Japanese culture to the outs or from the outside looks really cool. And it's like, oh my God, I want to live there. But It, you know, it's, it's not, like you don't run to school every morning with toast in your mouth. Yeah, you know, that's not. Nah, that's Some not mornings you have to eat something else like Pocky、mm -hmm. or sushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, Robert's, I, I mean, so that makes Robert the only one of us I think that's actually been to Japan, right? So、um, I will say, though, too, that like I, I, there was one point where I was just like, wow, living in Japan sounds great. Sounds like a fucking place. I mean, there's no crime. There's, you know, the food all looks good. I'd probably be much healthier <laughs> living on the Japanese diet as opposed to what I live on here and things like that. And anime is cool and blah, blah, blah. But just if you actually sit down and think about it logistically, about like already moving to another country is difficult, right? Like moving to fucking Canada is difficult. Or if, you, God forbid, if you're a Canadian moving here, it's even more difficult,、mm. right? But If you're someone who's thinking about moving all the way to somewhere like Japan, I mean, that's the clear other side of the world. They speak an entirely different language. Their infrastructure is different. The way they do things like taxes is different.、Um, I mean, there's just a lot of nuances there, not to mention, and I'm sure we'll get into it, like how hard it is to get a place to live as a foreigner there.、Um, yeah, it's just, there's just a lot of logistical difficulties to actually living there, not even getting into the whole politics of it all. Yeah. As, and even as like,、uh, Native Japanese people also face just general bullshit、uh, the same way that 
uh, most countries face general bullshit, uh, typically stemming from uh, cultural practices and political practices, etc. Um, but when when I was a young girl, I definitely totally idealized Japan. I was like, this this place can have no flaws. It totally doesn't. Um, but the first thing that I kind of uh, came to realize was flawed in Japan, believe it or not, was uh, gender inequality. Uh, Wait, are you telling me that that what? the women treat the men awfully? Yeah, is that's that, the way it works. Is that, oh, okay. It's a complete woman ruled yeah. society. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah uh, uh, women head every single uh, CEO board any kind of board of directors, any kind of a political organization, it's women at the head of it. Mm, makes sense. Uh, no, facetious here. It's totally the opposite. Um, I believe I saw a statistic where it's like women uh, in Japan hold 45% of bachelor degrees, uh, but only are 14% of the workforce or employers, mm. one or the other. Uh, I think more of the workforce, so I'm going to say employers, employers at that point so yeah i was gonna say women owned business is uh the exception rather than the rule mm. yeah and i think part of that just kind of stems from just generally speaking uh society is a little more conservative in far east asian cultures right mm. uh like america absolutely has its problems when it comes to basic human rights and decency for <laughs> what for people who aren't white straight men we, right we've never talked but, about that on this podcast i mean that's true i mean texas is leading in gender equality right texas now texas absolutely sure. Just, exemplary yeah, yeah the lone star example of, of, good, <laughs> of good gender equality god damn uh, no it. texas law fucking sucks um but texas. yeah there, there's a god. little there's a little more of that vibe of like, yeah, you know, the man's the breadwinner and the women, you know, stay home and cook and take care of the kids and all that. Right. Like whenever you see a woman in power in Japan, I, I remember hearing, I think, a Japan Times podcast about this where it's just there are women who find it hard to like even consider the aspect of dating in their lives, because once they do, it's not really a question of, you know, can I date and then also you know, be a career woman? It's, it's like dating and then marriage is the end of your career. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say too, like full disclosure on my side of things, like I get a lot of my information about living in Japan as a foreigner from channels like Abroad in Japan on YouTube and like Sharla in Japan and stuff like that. Um, so like I like it's a lot of secondhand for information like that from from me too. Um, but even he talks about like his experience dating in Japan and how like right from the get go it's like talk of marriage within like six months. And it's like that's just how the dating culture is there. Like they getting married and having kids is like the end goal and there's also something to say about how like uh i, I believe japan has like historically low birth rates right now too so yes. a lot of the society is just older there's just old a lot of older demographic there um so i think naturally that's going to lead to a lot of older people in leadership therefore you're going to get more old school people you're going to get people with more conservative values yeah because i'm sure like there's some younger people in japanese society that are much more uh progressive yeah and but a lot the thing is is that uh in in i i guess a pseudo uh progressive way of what's happening is because of the uh regressive ideas that like once you have children it's it's not uh your your stay-at-home mom that's typically uh what you should be aiming for and if you're doing more than that you're gonna get talked about behind your back if not to your face um mm. so because of that it's like no i don't want to get married i don't want to date i like my job i want to work um and thus we have the historically low birth rates mm. i so my question is though is it's I mean, is it possible in a lot of places in Japan to be a single income family and like live comfortably? You mean like, like, like what I'm saying is like have the father as the breadwinner and then like you have a stay at home mom and then you have like a kid or two. Like, is it like, you know, is it livable there like wage wise? Like, I'm, I don't know. It'd probably be really difficult. I would assume in like Tokyo or someplace like that to be able to afford on, on a single income to have a family there. Mm. Well, it it probably helps that a lot of the apartments in Japan tend to be pretty small. Right. Um, I mean, and I think that's one thing you see a lot in anime, right? That, so that's something that you can actually probably relate to is that, you know, studio apartments 
are kind of the norm. Mm. So, you know, for, for people who want to live on their own, it's really cheap, right? But then when you're trying to support a family, right, maybe you have to cut some corners, you know? Yeah. Or consider uh, living elsewhere, which sometimes considering your job is much more difficult. Um, I want to get to the to the work culture later on here in this podcast because there's definitely some parts of it that I admire as mm. far as like putting in a lot of time into training, but then uh, that that comes with its own burdens, does it not? Uh, but uh, sexism in Japan recently kind of came into the international spotlight because of the Olympics, mm. and uh, we we had our, our our old boy. He's 84. Uh, Yoshino Mori, he was the former uh, head of like the Olympic Council in Japan. And uh, when the question came up of like, why are there no, there's no women on the board? Um, what's up with that? He said something to the effect of uh, women talk too much in meetings and it's annoying. Yeah, pretty shitty. So, it, so let's wow. not have women on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we just, just straight up. Put that out there, huh? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty. It's not just like, oh, women aren't as suited to this. It was pretty like, uh, uh, what's the the phrase all the kids use? Mask off, uh, mm, moment yeah. of like, women are annoying, and I don't want to hear them. Um, <laughs> tell me you haven't had any media training without telling me you've never had media training. <laughs> yeah, uh, and he did uh wind up stepping down from that position and was replaced with a, a much younger woman, which is cool, but. The Olympic Council then continued to be like, okay, we're going to have women in our meetings, but they're not allowed to talk. What? Well, makes sense, for sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. They, they gave a concession. There's a woman there now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's just not allowed to say anything. Yeah. And funny enough, that's not even the only example of... I mean, the Olympics this year have been... Uh, under a lot of <laughs> scandal. Uh, I'm sure Daly has a lot of notes about that. Uh, but I know there's another guy who also made some shitty comments about women that also ended up resigning from the, the Tokyo Olympic Committee. I think the creative head of it, uh, Hiroshi Sasaki, uh, was talking about how there was an entertainer like, who, and he was just like texting the, the, the other people and he was like, oh yeah, she could play the role of the Olympic pig, P-I-G. And it's like, Jesus, man, come on, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you might know us from, uh, dear listener, you might know us from our days uh, in Terrace House. And uh, on that show, I think it was easy to spot and uh, talk more about like the everyday uh, issues as far as like expectations for the way that people look uh, and how there's just like not really a lot of uh, any, any kind of, uh, I guess, like fat acceptance movement in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty, people are pretty blunt, especially about women, uh, as far as uh, when there's a woman in public that doesn't, I guess, look like the ideal woman for people to comment on and then say mean things online. Yeah, and it's, it's not even like hush hush like trucking behind their back it just it in some cases it's just like acceptable in a weird way to just voice that kind of insult you know just out there yeah 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 i mean in teresa's case then you have these people on a on a public stage and where their social media is easily accessible and uh wouldn't you know bullying tend to have tends to happen mm. wow yeah that's a that's a whole other can of worms as far as like bullying goes in japan yeah, um, definitely. I did want to, while we're still on gender, um, I have a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence from uh, friends that have gone to Japan um, and have been uh, instantly sexually harassed. Uh, instantly. It's an ex expectation because uh, within my first, I'd say, 100 vocabulary words in my uh, college Japanese classes, I learned uh, chikan, which is pervert. Uh, oh. So it's like literally like in the textbook, it was like, look out for perverts on the train. So so this textbook to teach foreigners Japanese was like the, f the first hundred words you need to learn. Pervert is in that list. You're going to need to know because wow. it's gonna, it's a given. It's going to happen. If you're Jesus. a woman who exists, it's going to happen. And that's the reason why uh, there are all women uh, carriages in Japan still to this day. I believe that uh, was a part of America's past um, because the lady folks, we should have our own 
um, carriage on the train so that we don't have to worry about the dastardly men. Um, whereas that's something that still exists in Japan because it's sexual harassment is just rampant, rampant. Just Even so. though there's no, there's no crime in Japan. Well, <laughs> well uh -huh. I don't there, know about that. There is a hundred percent conviction rate, um, which is, it, I didn't do a lot of research on this one because I, I found that number and I was like, surely that's not correct. Um, no, 100% conviction rate, um, meaning that like if you're, you're, you're going, if you are seen jaywalking, you're going to get convicted of jaywalking. Ah, it's not a, well, let them off this time. Uh, if you do the crime, you do the time. Yeah. Or if you're accused of the crime, you're going to do some time anyway. Mm -hmm. Or Unless if you make a, a vagina boat. You're going to be held in women's prison for 10 days at the very least. Which is ridiculous, honestly. <sighs> okay. I mean, and, well, <laughs> can I just say on the point of crime? Yes. Um, I know in America, right, it's pretty common that as morbid as it is, like, you know, school shootings happen a lot. Shootings in general tend to happen a lot, right? Mm. And it, it can easily get to the point in America where you grow numb to those headlines. But what I've noticed in my time in Korea and then from what I hear from Japan, so take this with a grain of salt, right? But so obviously guns aren't legal there, right? Like you can't right. just get a gun in the same way you can in America for whatever reason. Um, so you don't hear as often about like a massive shooting of some kind in mm. that area of the world. But when you do hear about like a stabbing or a murder, it's usually like the details are really gruesome and fucked up. You know, and I don't know what that says about culture in general, but just something I thought was kind of interesting to point out. Yeah, that's it, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, because in Japan, I don't even think I mean, either cops don't often carry guns or when they do, they are very hesitant to use them. Isn't that true? I believe uh, only certain ranks of cops are allowed to carry right. uh, pistols, but the typical policeman that you're going to see on the street is not allowed to carry. Uh, firearm. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, our police are decked out with fucking military grade God. equipment. Yes. Yeah. AR 15s and. Yes. Yep. And tanks and. Yep. 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 Although I must say, okay, in Japan, they have people catchers. Have you ever seen the people catcher sticks? It's like a net. It's okay. It it's better than a net. It's something that I think we could implement here or anywhere you wish to catch people. Um, it's just a long stick. And then a half moon shape, and then it locks on the end. It has like grabby arms. Mm. I'm hoping I'm describing this well enough that you get a mental uh, image. It's, it <laughs> sounds like a Looney Tunes tool, kind yeah, of. Yeah, but is like, it, is it made by so Acme? You, you hit someone with it, and then it closes around them, and it's basically you're in a hula hoop attached to a police officer at the end. So, mm -hmm. you know, that would be it. great to have in America, but where can I attach my gun? Oh, I, I, there's many options, I'm sure. We could outfit the end of it, the other end of it. It just automatically shoots when you brandish it. Mm -hmm. That'll, that'll uh, work great, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, I, I will say, though, I mean, I think the most common crime in Japan is, like, umbrella theft. So, like, compared to here, where it's like, yeah, there's shootings. And I, I mean, one of the most common crimes here is actually bike theft. Um... But beyond that, it's like, I mean, there's shootings all the fucking time. According to anime, people steal hearts more than they steal umbrellas. Thanks, Kaguya-sama. You're welcome. Oh, boy. <laughs> it is a crime. I will arrest you. You stole my heart. <laughs> You're under arrest. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, obscenity um, laws. Um, you, you might think of Japan as a place where a lot of obscene things originate <laughs> as far as... Uh, in the animes and the hentais like handholding uh, oh yeah it's yeah very obscene stop that blur that out mm -hmm. or make the like little tiny uh sensor bars that totally help yes yes those um but so the way that uh certain items are sold uh have to be censored um but that doesn't stop the fact that there is a festival uh celebrating male genitalia mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh male genitalia at this festival 
uh, this very phallic festival where they parade a giant penis can we, through can, the streets. Can, can say it. This can is a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> There's dicks everywhere. Dicks okay. everywhere. There's dick lollipops. They're given to children. People are wearing dick hats. People are getting uh, dick radishes, dick daikon. Uh, dicks. Dicks, dicks, dicks everywhere. Dick Daikon sounds like a detective character name. In, in, in <laughs> Ace Attorney. An Ace Attorney specifically. <laughs> Dick Daikon on the case. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but, um, and I, I don't personally have a problem with that. Uh, I did find it somewhat objectionable. The little, uh, the uh, tiles where you write wishes and then you tie them um, onto a particular shrine. Uh, those have also during this festival are fairly obscene with mm. uh, various images that may or may not uh, be regularly censored any other day of the week, but not during this festival. Uh, so, so with that in mind, that's all fine and good. But a well, woman... And, well, I'm sure there's also oh. like a vagina festival nearby, right? Of course. I mean, equal representation and... No? Oh. No. Oh, no. No, no there's no uh, Yannick... Uh, equivalent, unfortunately. Mm. There's no um, Vagina Festival? There's no Vagin, uh Regina <laughs> George Festival. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, one, one woman tried to change all that. Uh, and she made um, a kayak out of a 3D scan so it's accurate of uh, her vagina. Um, and uh, she's made various things, but it was mostly, I guess, the, the boat that uh, was objectionable. Um, she goes by the name uh, Roku Den Nashiko, which means good, good for nothing. Her real name is uh, Megumi Igarashi. And uh, she made various things out of her vagina. Um, cool, uh, but not cool if you're a cop. She got arrested for obscenity charges. But not anyone at the Dick Festival. No. Yeah, which by the way, I, I can I just point out that they have this dick festival in Kawasaki, Japan. Kawasaki is a brand of motorcycle, specifically crotch rockets. Ah, the, it's all, here's the connection all it's along. It's all coming together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, so, uh, coincidence? I think not. A co yeah, no, not a coincidence at all. But this happened back in um, 2014. Um, and I believe she still said, like, to this day, she's pretty much harassed by the cops because of her art um, and its yonic nature. Mm. Yeah, and I find that just so, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to look at it from an American perspective, right? Because on the one hand, I can't think of an example in, in like, the national dialogue of America where a dick festival would be okay, right? Right, because you'd probably get you know think it's of the, the children, Republican and, National Convention. Am I right? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but like dicks in the other sense, right? <laughs> yes. But but like actual statues and like pa papier mache of like giant dicks, right? Like you wouldn't get that here in America because I think America's a little too neo puritan for that sort of thing. Mm. Actually, so, if actually gay pride parades tend to veer in that direction. Yeah, that's true, and that's a very like yeah. liberal, you know, progressive space, right? Definitely is, yeah. Um. But like, I, you know, you wouldn't see like 4th of July and then 5th of July is the dick festival right after that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, man, yeah. I got to gear up. <laughs> right. Um, so in that sense, is Japan progressive? I don't know. Maybe. Who's to say? Right. But then when you think about the double standard of like the, the male genitalia is OK. But mm, I don't know about the women genitalia, oh, let alone yeah. any, you know, anyone else on the gender spectrum or I, not I on think that. The, the comparison could be made to to the fact that uh, it's it's female nudity, um, while again, uh, as you said, like uh, we live in a kind of a vaguely neo Puritan culture, so that you don't see that a lot. But in Hollywood, I I have been exposed to many titties, mm. but. Very Jeez. rarely do you have full frontal male nudity in a film that's not specifically about male frontal nudity. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think the late actually the last time I saw full frontal male nudity was in uh, Chernobyl, <laughs> actually, of all movies. Mm. 
Ah. Or all shows, I should say. I didn't know that that would have featured it. That would have yeah. uh, surprised me then. Well, that's I, HBO, I won't, right? I won't spoil it. Mm. Yeah, it's HBO. Yeah, I um, feel like I, with most HBO shows, it's like a, it's like a coin toss. Is there a dick in this? That's yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. I mean, uh, we had a uh, Kid Harrington argued for more male frontal nudity in Game of Thrones back when Game of Thrones was still good. Mm. HBO Rip, more like HDO, piece. am I right? It, I get it. The, the D stands for. Uh, mm-hmm. determination there you gotcha. go. the home gotcha. determination office uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but i i do think it's just kind of gross right that there's just this blatant double standard right that's that's coming on and it was in that article you linked us right the glamour article which i imagine is probably going to be in the description below um yes where the artist you know she was saying how the japanese word for vagina is very like like hush hush it's censored in in like journalism spaces whereas the japanese word for penis is not censored at all i mean clearly because there's a festival fucking nearby right um yeah so it's just i i mean i'm speaking from my male privilege but it just seems like a scary world to imagine that i can't publicly say the word to describe the thing that i've lived with since i was literally zero years old you know yeah Nah, yeah. you, we get all kinds of uh, euphemisms instead of the vagina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and then the, the dick is just like the butt of so many jokes in Japanese culture, too, whether it's anime or otherwise. Man, like, that is like a very complex... For someone who is learning English, that is a complex sentence. The dick is the butt <laughs> of so many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait... <laughs> I thought it was on the front. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm glad I chose those words. And, but, uh, you know, because I remember when we were watching Terrace House together, you know, the, uh, Toku, we would crack jokes about dicks all the time. He'd be like, yeah, I'd grab his crotch just to feel the, the summer of my youth or whatever the fuck he would say. Like, it was just <laughs> like really, it would just be thrown around willy nilly. But God yeah, forbid you talk willies. about a vagina. I get it. Ah. Willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's uh, unfortunately at this point uh, more the culture of humanity versus uh, specifically Japanese culture. But I remember running into this story um, about uh, Roku Denashiko and her being literally arrested and put into prison for making Terrible. a vagina boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the fact that that was never, uh, she, she's never able to like overturn that. She's going to have a criminal record because of a vagina boat. It was very frustrating. It's still very frustrating. I think there I think the way that they like they as Japanese culture justify it is because the whole dick festival thing. The excuse there is it's rooted in tradition is my assumption. Like, well, yeah, it was it was the story story. was there was yeah, there was a there was a demon in the vagina of a goddess. That and doesn't sound like the basis for a sexist story whatsoever. No, there was a demon in the vagina of a goddess, and it kept biting off dicks until a uh, uh, blacksmith made an um, iron dick, and then its teeth broke, and it was defeated. Mm-hmm. And he saved the world. Ah. Yep. That is how we avoided total destruction, I'm mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> One steel dick to save the world. Yeah, I mean that's that's why there are those, there's that phallus festival. Yeah, we we must celebrate the male form, uh, and hush hush the female form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, of course. same same way that uh, same sex marriage is. By the by the way, same sex marriage isn't. There's no marriage equality in Japan. There are certain uh, provinces uh, or cities. I think it's not even provinces. I think it's specifically like in this city, it is legal, um, but that it's it's not. The whole country yeah and i mean you you still run into that in most modern like anime or like japanese games today where being gay or queer is more often than not the the joke than it is mm. like a character's identity right like even a game like persona 5 i think there was that little controversy where there was like a clearly gay couple and they were like hitting on one of your characters, but it was they were framed as like, oh, they abduct young children, like young boys because yes. they're gay and because they're gay, they are evil. They're, they're going to snatch him up and eat him. Mm-hmm. Yikes. 
it was very predatory um and like there's there's a lot of those depictions that still exist even amidst like a thriving uh yaoi and yuri uh audience it's still there and oftentimes um especially uh in the in the yaoi space with fujoshi rotten girls like me reading yaoi uh it's less about like you don't want it to be like there's girls that don't want it to be accepted because then the mm-hmm. taboo is gone and then it's not sexy anymore which uh, is yeah. just whoa okay i which, can't get in that headspace yeah and to frame that in like a more american way it's kind of the idea of how like incest is weirdly big here in, in american porn right or like western porn but part of it's probably because it's taboo and if you're an american or western listener right now you're like well yeah of course like incest is gross right and that's a pretty you know milk toast take to have um in that same way in japan they're like a milk toast taste take to have is oh yeah like actual like two boys kissing no yeah or often uh with girls it's like oh you grow you grow out of that that's Mm something like you know if you go to an all-girls school in high school yeah you have a girlfriend but you grow out of that which is a common plot in some yuri where it's like Oh yeah, we did. We dated in uh, high school, but that's not a real relationship because it's we're girls in high school. For, which is like one of those things where it's just like, is it? Do of course we date in high school. Is that a thing? Yeah, I mean, and, and to be fair, right, especially in the more progressive spaces in Japan, there's like there are more gay bars showing up, and like there are just places where it's becoming more accepted to be who you are, which is rad. Um, but you know, it's not quite the uh, like. There's no law <laughs> in the world of Japan that yeah. cements your right to be you. Yeah, it's yeah. very much uh, reflective of uh, the kind of uh, collectivist culture where the the nail that stands up is the one that gets hammered down. Um, I used to know that phrase in Japanese because it is originally a Japanese phrase, um, and the same goes with race in japan uh i think um especially now it's kind of more uh not celebrated but more like fetishized like being like hafu in japan like Mm. ooh, they're mixed race they're very handsome but that doesn't also translate to respect it translates more to like oh they're good looking but they're not totally japanese like even if they were born here they're not really japanese yeah um, which we saw in 2015, there was a whole hullabaloo about uh, Miss Universe Japan. Uh, her name is Ariana Miyamoto, and she is half black, but she was born and raised in Japan. Uh, she's literally Miss Japan, but uh, she has constantly had to defend her Japanese-ness because people are like, okay, but you're not really Japanese because, yeah. you know, uh, you're not really Japanese because you're black. Which is pretty racist, for sure. It's, it's pretty racist. It's a little yeah. bit racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I. I just want to say that, like, I, I really hope though that as time goes on, you know, and like some of these older like people in leadership, and like just the way more conservative people, like just just start to get pushed out, and I hope like naturally leadership starts to lean a little bit more progressive in Japan. Because, I don't know, just the, like the, the younger people, the younger generation that's in Japan, like our age and stuff like that, they definitely feel like it feels like they're on the more liberal side. I don't know if it's just because I watch too much Terrace House, but I kind of get that sense. Mm. You know? Well, I, I think that's, that's just something generally around the world, right? It's a pretty common narrative that the younger generations tend to be more progressive than the older generations. I feel like that's fairly true here in America as well, right? Yeah. Mm. Um. Because when you look at the leadership in Japan, right, let's look at the past two prime ministers, you've got Shinzo Abe, who stepped down uh, toward the end of last year in 2020, and now you have uh, Suga, right? Who's also stepping down. Yeah, but as of right now, he's still the prime minister, as far Mm -hmm. as I understand, right? And Abe is described as like a, 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 what's the word, like a nationalist, basically. He's He's very pro-Japan. Like, I mean... Every leader of their own country should be pro their country, right? Yes. For sure. But 
as in like the ethnicity the japanese people right like he oh, refused he refused to uh acknowledge that korean women during you know japanese occupation the whole comfort women thing which is so gross if you, if you don't know i mean tldr of sex slavery right was essentially yeah. how korean women were treated when japan owned korea and like took over and that to this day is still a pain point between the two countries and the fact that they have had a prime minister, and I believe Suga as well right now, uh, leaders that don't recognize this you know, terrible moment in history and therefore by extension refuse to make amends or reparations or even just apologize and recognize yeah. it. It's, it's tough, right? You know, it's, it's tough to and look at that, that ideology in Japan and say like, yeah, that's, that's very nice progressive and friendly yeah. to your fellow neighbors across if you want to call it the sea of japan we can call it that right yeah <laughs> there's a uh unfortunately a surprisingly strong anti-korean sentiment in japan um not only from the past from that um i believe it's still there's uh laws on the books where there's there's uh people whose like great grandmother was born in korea but they have since been living in Japan, so their grandmother, uh, their mother, and them are all born in Japan, but they still don't have Japanese nationality because mm. specifically they came from Korea. Uh, Japan, unlike uh, the US, it's not birthright citizenship. It's a different process that I'm totally not familiar with. Yeah, but there's there's it's specifically targeting um, people with of Korean descent. Um, and that's not just like an old thing, like in uh, 2011, uh, good old Fuji TV started uh, broadcasting a lot of Korean dramas um, because, you know, the, the Korean wave, K-dramas, they everywhere now. Mm -hmm. um, and there was actually a huge protest outside of Fuji TV for that. They were like, stop it. No, no Korean dramas, only Japanese dramas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's kind of nuts, right? It's kind of yeah. wild. Which is interesting because like in the music space, I feel like there have been, there's been more of a blurring of the lines between the two. You know, like twice, I think has both Korean and Japanese members uh, mm. in their group and their songs, like they have Korean and Japanese versions of the same song in some yeah. cases. Interesting. Same with, yeah. I believe there's BTS, like some of the first BTS songs I heard were in Japanese and I and then I was confused I was like wait I thought they were a Korean band mm -hmm. yeah that's I did. really crazy yeah I will say that um it, it's funny too because then like you, you know, obviously there's a strange relationship like you guys were saying between Japan and Korea but then the, you look at the you the relationship between the US and Japan right and it's like you know Japan watches our movies they listen to a lot of our music you know what i'm saying we we watch a lot of their their anime we listen to a lot of their music too you know there's like kind of a relationship there that goes back and forth and i i feel like you know the influence of western culture in, in japan and the you know the influence of japanese culture in the u.s is very much like just like a mutual like commendable relationship in a lot of ways like people look at it like relatively favorably as like taking on a lot of our our fashion and a right. lot of our pop culture in in that sense yeah i would argue that um in a lot of ways japan uh romanticizes the 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 west uh mm. broadly european and american speaking um and you see that with like the like oh she's from france actually <laughs> there was like a lot of uh i remember in death note especially especially there was a lot of like oh they're actually this they're from this country they're from germany they're from france they're from so and so um and i think that kind of unfortunately connects to the skin whitening craze as well um so in in japan and korea in the in the very far east like i watched a whole uh thing about like why do certain people have their skin colors and that's uh other than like what we broadly see as the west um the far east uh also has like the very white skin color and that has become uh fetishized and celebrated over time to the point that uh it 
people get called like black bean if they're slightly darker of tone as many people of uh from different parts of asia are um not totally lily white yeah and i mean i know we're, we're focusing on japan in this episode but anecdotally speaking my time in korea right like it's really common to walk by makeup stores and the big banners on the outside are about a skin whitening cream of some kind for your face right like that's just that big of a deal there which is kind of nuts and to even go further with the whole you know i the western idea of beauty it's fairly common in korea for girls especially once they hit like 16 or 18 like a milestone that they get surgery to make their eyes wider or like they open taller like a more western idea yeah. of eyes and beautiful eyes that's yeah that's wild i actually didn't know that about the surgery thing that's mm -hmm. nuts i and all my point is with the, the the point i'm making trying to make it rather uh with this is uh just how you know japan is like this with korea over here but then when it comes to us it's like oh yeah yeah yeah, like it's cool guys whatever you know like i mean to be fair japan is still like what 98 percent japanese so it's not like you know they're absolutely open arms when it comes to actually you know actual foreigners coming to the country um but it just it's just funny how much they're okay with taking on a lot of like the pop culture parts and the fashion parts of western culture and things like that oh yeah mm -hmm. that that part's fine uh yeah broader ideas of like uh marriage equality and uh yeah. gender equality we're gonna we're gonna wait a little bit on that one i guess yeah unfortunately unfortunately yeah. or uh work-life balance that's not a thing. <laughs> I think um, that's that's more commonly known to uh, the general population outside of Japan that people in Japan work to death. We have a word for it. Literally, Karoshi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I, I want to say that overall, I think because of the international attention and obviously within Japan, national attention that uh, Karoshi has gotten, that maybe work conditions have gotten better. Uh, but work culture in Japan, I, I would, in my opinion, I think in a lot of people's opinion is pretty brutal, pretty demanding. Um, it's your life. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no work life balance. Work is life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fairly common and almost social pressured in a way, right? Where even when the clock hits five and you know, it's time to go home, it's like, oh, but we're going to get some drinks. You want to come, right? And, you know, I mean, I'm sure if you, especially if you work like an office job in America, you've done that too, right? But in Japan, there's this sense of, um, like, you you have, like, that's you're, still... You're obliged. That's, yeah, you're on yeah. the clock, basically. Still. Yeah, you're on the clock without being on the clock. Yeah, like, you don't have to, but you, you have to. Yeah, especially, I mean, uh, that's why we have, like, the word, like, salary man, um, is that a lot of employees are salaried. But that doesn't mean that you're um, exempt from like overtime work. You're just not getting paid for it. Uh, mm -hmm. You're just uh, socially expected to like, we're all working in the office really late tonight. Um, and if you leave, you're not a team player. You're not a good worker. Um, and it even translates to like, you, maybe you're not even doing anything productive. Maybe you do have all your work done. But if you leave early to go see your family, you don't care about your work enough yeah so what we're saying is back in 1990 whatever when street fighter came out guile was very ah. progressive <laughs> he was very progressive well he was an american character but through the lens of japanese he said go home and be a family man and you know what mm. that still rings true that i think yeah that rings true yes. yeah so when you're not going out <laughs> for drinks with your homies at work after work or not even not your homies uh you still gotta stay late and even if you get all your work done you gotta at least look like you're busy yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the worst part of it I, I guess the part of the work culture i want to uh praise as someone that is currently uh looking for work and is typically shut out of the jobs that i'm interested in because i don't have experience but i need to have work in order to get experience it's that lovely vicious cycle there um uh, in japan it's typically when you sign on to a company you're expected to be staying there for a very long time so they will put you through uh a good amount of training like they're willing to like you enter in basically as a class uh of the workforce like we hired a bunch of people this spring and now they're all coming in and now they're all you know juniors at the company and they get all this training 
um, and are expected to be here for many, many years to come. Um, great. But then that comes with the expectation that this is what you do now. This is your life yeah. now. Yeah, that's the flip side of it, right? Like, I think it's rare to find in white collar America someone who stays with a single company for 20 years. And if that's the case, they probably are clawing their way up the corporate ladder, right? Like, that's always how it is. But in Japan, it's far more common that, like, you work at Sony, you stay at Sony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, you know, for some people that might sound super appealing, like it sounds pretty appealing to me right now, but in the long run, uh, especially, you know, you want to start a family at some point as a woman. Oh, so you're, you're going to quit. Bye. Or like, oh, you're eventually going to quit because you'll eventually get married. Right. So you don't get as many opportunities in the office. Yeah. Good God. Or you're, you're a tea girl. Those exist. Uh, fairly, fairly, uh, widespread existence of like oh we're having a client over get that girl to go make tea i don't mm -hmm. care if she's like a software developer we need a woman to go make tea yeah and so as you can imagine as as an aside to all of the work culture stuff and the the sexism that happens in japan you can imagine that uh maybe potentially mental health is an ideal there question mark <laughs> yeah it isn't if i mean if you think it's bad here in the u.s japan's like whole other level it just doesn't get talked about there right well I, and i feel like too that's a global issue generally right with yeah I mean, especially because i think america has for most of the western hemisphere really set a tone that a lot of other cultures i mean they probably may not aspire to it but there's definitely like some things they do that just come from european sensibilities right mm. and there's just that feeling of you gotta hustle you gotta do the work hustle you gotta um pull yourself up by your bootstraps just put in the work right um just and it's do only, it. yeah and it's only recently we're like the four day work week and like hey maybe ato should be better for people right like time off should be cool uh it's only recently that those ideas have really been talked about and only very very recently we're like full-on nations are trying to implement a four-day work week on a trial basis you know and i can only hope that that makes its way to japan too because i think if there's any nation in the world that could use a little bit of a four-day work week japan seems like one of them yeah um japan does have uh paid time off that is a thing that exists um but studies have indicated that uh Japanese people are the least likely to take advantage of that. Like they, they'll be like, no, I, I, I don't need to use my paid time off. I swear, boss, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I want to, I want to help. I want to work. I want to keep working. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make yourself look good. But I have literally, so, you know, uh, as I've lamented in my, in past episodes that I'm on this path of like trying to get in the games industry and things like that. And I've talked to people in the games industry and they're like, listen, man, like you're in your first five years. You should be trying to hold down as many jobs at as many different studios as you can to get like experience. And that just wouldn't happen in a place like Japan at all. Like it's no. it's like unheard of. No. Uh although unfortunately, um, when it comes to certain industries, uh, like the games industry, um, more specifically like the an like animation industry in Japan, those people aren't getting paid a lot. Like no. even the like most famous mangaka, the most famous animators at the most famous animation studios, you're not getting paid the big bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're getting paid a kind of livable salary, and then that's your life is work is working. Yeah. Like, even with like the the people that make the biggest manga and anime were like Toriyama and the like. Yeah, they no, only that. No. Really, I mean, yeah, actually. Have the, those franchises make so much money. The I, franchises I, do. The manga cut does not. Yeah, I wonder how cushy Aichiro Oda lives in terms of finances, right? Because I know he is a notorious workaholic. Like, yes. I saw this chart the other day that was like every week of One Piece since he started. I think he's only taken like 20 or so weeks off yeah. for like 20 plus years. I know that for... Kishimoto sensei Masashi Kishimoto from like who wrote Naruto uh he wasn't able to take any time off to get married or have a honeymoon 
they just kind of are like, okay, we're married now. I got to go keep writing. Yeah. Just nuts. Like the longest vacation Oda Sensei had was what, four weeks? And that was after a time skip. Like, like he established a time skip in One Piece. And then he was like, cool, now I'm going to go skip. God, if for like I was four weeks. Manga, I'd be like, we're going to time skip every other week. I need a break. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, I mean, then that's, is... and that's not even to say like there's millions of manga out there made by hundreds, thousands of mangaka who you've never heard of because they didn't make One Piece or Naruto. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, these are the biggest names in manga. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's crazy to me. Like, that. I, I would really be curious then how they negotiate those contracts and how the creator doesn't get like a big slice of that pie because those franchises make millions, uh, do- uh, millions of dollars a year at least. Like, well, the profit isn't what is the valuable part. It's more like the prestige of, of making it and then uh, working on it diligently. Um, because as we've seen with like uh, the mangaka behind like Hunter x Hunter, he's become like kind of unfortunately notorious for taking time off. Like people are angry at him, even though it like literally is like he cannot physically work. Mm -hmm. He has worked himself to the point that it is physically painful for him to do so. And I'm not going to begrudge him taking off that time. No. And then to bring it to the anime side of things, I mean, that's not any better. I mean, even some of the most beautifully animated stuff from some of the best studios like Ufotable, Ufotable, a fotable whatever you want to call them yeah though the the demon slayer and fate whatever people yeah i mean they work stupid hours to get their stuff to look that good right i think it's only recently that mappa who what did they do recently i mean they're they're doing chainsaw man right but Mm. they did attack on titan season four Mm -hmm. and jujutsu kaisen i think right Mm. um their chainsaw man branch is like a new branch of the studio and they're (laughs) <laughs> the big PR story there is we're trying to have better work hours. <laughs> Not even we do have it. We just we're trying. We're, we're right? attempting it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good. I think that forward progress is much needed. Right. But we've been anime has been around for what, 50, 60 years. When was Astro Boy? Like 1952? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very something. Yeah. So, I mean, anime has been around for a fucking long time. And it's taken this long for a studio to be like, what if we worked like 45 hours a week? <laughs> if, if that what? even, who knows, right? What it, what, what? it is. What am I going to do with all that time off? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, God forbid. I mean, I, what was crazy to me was uh, when Dragon Ball Super had come out, you know, Dragon Ball Z is hands down the biggest anime franchise in existence. Like it's, it's massively, massively huge. I wonder if everywhere. that's true. It's got to be. I mean, I feel like, I mean, Detective Conan, it's been around. Doraemon. That, yeah, but that, 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 nobody cares about that in the U.S. and compared to Dragon Ball. Maybe. I feel like I don't wanna, I'd want to do more research on that, but yeah. Okay, well. But it's big. It, it's very it's big. Yeah, Dragon Ball is very big. Dragon Ball, my point the is. balls are big. It's yes. like, it was very surprising to me when Dragon Ball Super came out and the first, like, the first news stories that were coming out about it were like, wow, the animation is extremely low quality like the, the certain frames just look awful like the 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 drawing quality was just terrible in certain places um to the point where they actually had to like go back and redo those first couple of seasons um and they would have like animation leads on different episodes and they would vary so heavily in quality and it was it, it was mm. it was jarring from sometimes going from episode to episode um and that to me was really surprising i was like it's it's dragon ball it's one of the biggest anime franchises on the planet like why why is it having like why are they going with such a low budget on this and it turns out it's not really so much the budget it's that they were trying to bang out an episode a week Mm -hmm. which is a shitload of work because dragon ball is a shonen anime there's a lot of action it's a lot of animation that needs to be done and so i mean that's just such a tough timeline but it's just crazy to me that 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 that, that's how would they would go about such a popular franchise yeah, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's like, oh, we should take more time with this. It's more based on the like it's been announced. Delays are not allowed. <laughs> Delays are not a thing that typically yeah. flies unless uh unfortunately in the case of like Kyoto Annie, the studio literally burns to the ground. Right. Or I think there were some anime that were also delayed for a recent earthquake or so. So like mm. a natural disaster here, but it shouldn't take the earth getting pissy 
yeah. for, for people to have a, a little bit of work-life balance, right? Because that's not there. Even... That brings me to our my final point about Japan: too many earthquakes, mm, <laughs> too many yeah. national or national national, national disasters. disasters. Yeah. yeah, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean it's their own. yes their their geographical location topped with their geography with you know having active volcanoes and also like where they lay off the coast of like greater Asia there. And like, they're, they're just as any, if anything's coming off of the ocean, like Japan's going to be the first to get hit by it. Um, yeah. like, I mean, that's yeah, why they, they get really hit by hurricanes, tidal waves. <laughs> they, it is let's a just take up, take, and pick cultural up Japan. issue that they can fix. Yeah. Let's just pick up Japan the amount of and move it somewhere disasters. else. Yeah. 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 Why don't they do that? Why haven't they done that? <laughs> yeah. Just make a giant claw machine. <laughs> yes. Japan. it might take a few attempts right claw machines right that's Wait. we need the aliens to come it's literally mm. a ufo machine so Could, the ufos will all come pick up japan and put it elsewhere yeah C could you imagine if they took japan and like picked it up and then just put it off the, the east coast of the u.s it just just dropped it right there like you just can sail like it's like it's like maybe i, I don't know like a couple hours boat here. ride from coast of new york to japan right there yeah, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> then I'd come back out to Seattle and be like, let's go catch the ferry to Tokyo, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a real long trip. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, they, at the end of the day, even though we've talked about all this stuff, like, I still think Japan, it, it does a lot of stuff right. You know, yes. I mean, compared to America, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, the big one is food to me. <laughs> to me, food well, is like a really big one. That's one. fair. I'll uh, agree with I, that. Yeah. I, so I, dude, I think I would actually be like 30 or 40 pounds lighter if I just lived on a Japanese diet. Mm -hmm. But, and I also think, you know, I, uh, one of the roots of this conversation when we when we were initially pitching it was like oh anime is a really big thing but there might be a lot of westerners who watch only anime mm. and kind of think that's what japan is when that's right. very much not the case and that was kind of the impetus of this episode right but i think there is still something to be said about how like anime dominates 2d animation right like like fuck yes. disney and they're they're 2d like they don't even do 2d animation anymore really right no. like anime is the king of that and it's so easy to find such beautiful animation that's well done and if you're a big fan of you know cartoons if you want to put it in a childish way like anime steps it up to 11 and yeah it's really cool pretty I, don't, I probably don't even tell you it's pretty rad yeah yeah and there's something for everyone like uh the reason why i i got into japan beyond anime was because of slice of life series that showed uh what life could be like uh in japan and there's a lot of aspects of it that i think are really neat like children are largely safe in japan to just like uh go on their first errand like a five-year-old going down and like i need to go buy some eggs for dinner that's awesome can't do that in a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it really is. There's a lot to admire. Um, but yeah, I think we came at this from an angle of uh, it's often idealized and romanticized and uh, fetishized for sure. Yes. Uh, Japan's great at fetishization, but um, that there's, there's uh, a flip side to that because we're all human. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're the kind of person who has genuinely be th been thinking about wanting to move to japan i i don't want this episode to be like no you're not allowed to right but you're I do allowed hope, to. yeah you're allowed to you're legally sure. like, allowed to we're, for we're just, sure <laughs> we're a bunch of nerds we have no power over you but i hope the information this episode has given you some food for japanese food for thought if you will um to at least consider like okay so if i do move there i know it's not going to all be like hunky dory peach keen right but am i willing to understand the society beyond you know toast and mouth as you run to school society yes. beyond kawaii des right like because there's far more to japanese culture there's, there's than kawaii you. des yeah yes absolutely and i will say too that i i referenced it earlier but uh chris from abroad in japan he did a video on like the actual logistics of moving to japan and living there as a foreigner i mean he's been there for I think going on 10 years um and he just talks about like matter of very matter of factly like you know 
if you're not a native Japanese person, you move to Japan, like here's what's going to happen. And it's things like, you know, filling out tax documents. They're a very paper centric society. So good luck doing any any of your paperwork online, you know, so that you got to fill it out with that. You have to have like a stamp. You actually have to have an, like a certified stamp from the country, like the, the, the federal government that acts as your signature. I would a personal seal, actually. I'll say yeah. that. But yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's cool, but at the same time, it's just another hoop to jump through. It's not just a matter of signing your name or whatever. Mm -hmm. um not to mention you know if you get hired there anything beyond like a jet program you need to learn you know business level japanese like keigo um and yeah and then the general gist of like getting around navigating if you don't know the language that well or still learning there's just a lot there you know and getting citizenship is is not easy either yeah ha. so ha. To, yeah, so to tldr japan isn't a fantasy world japan is full of humans just like america is full of humans it has its share of Good things, bad things, meh things, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. I d honestly, the thing I'm most jealous of with Japan is just how, how clean it is there and how everything just works really well. Like infrastructure, tr public transport, public amenities, like just basic stuff like water fountains are kept clean. Mm. They, they work, uh, you know, because living in Seattle, it's just not, <laughs> you know, a lot of parts of Seattle are pretty dirty, especially post pandemic. Are, and there's a lot of trash and out of a public uh water fountain in seattle show of hands no no hands. because a lot of them are disabled you can't <laughs> no i if anything man i do wish america invested more in like metropolitan infrastructure like new york city has a hmm. pretty decent subway system but like that's flooding, new york city has great way. public water uh mm. minus the flooding if before the flooding i went there yeah. several yeah. years ago and i uh was drinking from a water fountain in the museum of natural history and i couldn't get enough there's wow. good water you dream yeah. about it still i dream about it yeah apparently actually I, I do know that uh seattle has like a really state-of-the-art uh water purification system oh, um yeah. like our our Natural our uh, water sources are really really good our tap water is supposed, supposedly very healthy because we get a yeah. lot of it as uh melt from the mountains here mm -hmm. yeah water's great here this uh <laughs> podcast has been sponsored by aquafina uh our favorite <laughs> or just no. you mean sponsored Nestle? by by water hey by water dr hey drink some water public water drink drink some water stay hydrated this That's program a message i can get behind r slash hydro homies on reddit yes uh drink some water if you haven't already today everyone let's take a sip hydrate right now Where's your right yes? Now, every, everybody sip, right? Even you, listener. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So refreshing. Yeah, you hear that? That's some water drinking <sighs> ASMR for you to end out this episode. All right. If you'd like uh, more ASMR, you can follow us on OnlyFans at Everything in Poderation, <laughs> which we're still figuring out content for. So if you have uh, a content that you're yearning from us, uh, you can tell us all about that um, on either our Twitter at Everything in Pod, or you can email us at Everything in Pod at gmail dot com. We genuinely we want to hear what you guys want out of us. Um, other than feet pics, we're still on the fence about that. It really depends oh, on how much you're going to pay. We're on the fence about that. Oh, okay. Oh, so oh, <laughs> have you already posted, Robert? No, I just didn't think that was something that was on the table. Oh, <laughs> maybe it's not. I don't. You put a price, like, mm, it, how much money you offer in here is always Wait, going so to be the question. You haven't seen the three dozen foot feet pics that I already uploaded to the G drive? No, I just saw them on your phone. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so if you'd like to see Colin's feet pics, uh, you can check us out on OnlyFans or uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, mm -hmm. Also on YouTube, um, which we love reading uh, the comments on those, um, especially when they're about our feet. Uh, so this has been a very uh, Japanese-themed episode of Everything in Poderation. Uh, join us next week when we'll probably mention feet and OnlyFans again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're daily. We'll mention feet and OnlyFans again. It's I, not I just am... me. <laughs> Y'all helped me start this wait, empire. Wait. <laughs> Robert, are you king shaming? <gasps> yes, yes, I am. Robert's Robert. fucking king shaming. No, <laughs> yeah, no. Anyway. Uh, arigatou gozaimasu. Jana. Bye.